Hey, this is a quick tutorial video on how to upgrade your intercooler on your M235i. I would imagine the process is nearly the same for any car with the M55 engine. If you plan on replacing your charge pipes, I highly recommend doing this at the same time as the process overlaps quite a bit. I mean, you literally need to remove the factory intercooler just to get to your charge pipes, so you might as well put the upgraded one back in whenever you're done with your charge pipe install. Just a thought, could save a lot of time. First, get your car onto a lift, ramps, or jack stands. The more height you can get, the better. This is because you have to slide the intercooler out from the bottom of the front of your car, and you need some clearance between the bottom of the car and the ground. I use the lift so this is trivial. If you have a friend with a lift, then buy some pizza and beer for them and ask for some help. We'll work for pizza and beer. Start off by removing the skid plates. It's just a bunch of low torque bolts, easy but tedious. You'll already be able to get to the intercooler at this point, but it won't come out easily without removing the skid plates to both sides. Those are pretty easy too. It's just five more bolts and then it should come right out. There's an airfoil type of piece that can fall out, so I would be weary of that. If you test drive your car without knowing this, then uh, it might fall out onto your street. Ask me how I know. The one on the driver's side of the car has a connector that you need to remove. Uh, I think it's a ride height sensor, so just be wary of that. Use a flathead screwdriver to undo the two black plastic clips that hold the hose into place. Then uh, cable tie it out of the way. Use a flathead screwdriver to undo the two clips that hold the pipes onto the intercooler. These need to be pulled outwards from the center of the clip, and then the sides need to be pulled away from the pipe. Then the pipe should slide off with a little bit of force. Do this for both sides. The clips will look different if you have aftermarket charge pipes like I do, but the principle is identical in removal. Undo the two Torx bolts that hold the intercooler in place. Now you can pull the intercooler out. There's a plastic piece towards the front of the car that looks like it's in the way, but it's very flexible and I was able to easily pull it out while it's still in place. See how much bigger the new intercooler is? It should help quite a bit on those 100 degree summer days. Now this part will be a lot easier with a friend. If you have a lift, you can do what I did. I used gaffer tape strips to pull the plastic liner away and more strips on the radiator fan to pull it back. Getting her gaped wide open should make it easier to slide right in despite being girthier now. But again, if you have a friend to help with this, it's easier to tag team it. If you don't have a lift or a friend to help with this, you might need to remove the bumper liner crap. It wasn't immediately obvious to me how to remove it, so I decided to leave it in place, but it might not be that difficult to remove. The new intercooler outlet wasn't in the exact position of the OEM one, so I had to loosen the coupler for my charge pipe because it's a two-piece charge pipe, and then I could pull the bottom half closer to get it mated up to the new intercooler outlet. Just make sure you retighten this clamp after you uh, get the other end connected to the intercooler. I forgot and replaced all the skid plates until I noticed. Yeah, that sucked. You have to be patient to be stupid. So now install the hot side charge pipe. You can now reinstall the two bolts to hold the new intercooler in place. Before putting the skid plates back on though, I do recommend starting it up and giving it some revs to make sure you don't hear any obvious boost leaks. I used the cable tie to keep this middle skid plate piece uh, in place and then went for a quick little drive around the block just to make sure um, you know there aren't any boost leaks before you button everything up. That's not a great way of holding the middle skid plate in place so I wouldn't go above city limit you know like city street speeds but definitely worth going for a shakedown run before you uh, put all the skid plates back on. That's what I would do anyway. But anyway once you confirm it's not leaking get the skid plates back on and then you're done. Hopefully this is helpful I will see you in the next one. Good luck.